Hello class, welcome once again to our discussion on impulse and momentum. So this time we are going to solve uh, one problem no, for this video. So this is our first example. So an automobile weighing 4,000 pounds is driven down a 5 degree incline at a speed of 60 miles per hour. So when the brakes are applied causing a constant total braking force of 1,500 pounds, Determine the time required for the automobile to come to a stop. Okay, so this is the illustration. So we have here an automobile. Okay, so it has a weight of uh, 4,000 pounds. And this is uh, uh, moving in this uh, direction to the right, but in an inclined plane, inclined road. Okay, at a speed of 60 miles per hour. So, so... It has a v initial velocity of 60 miles per hour, okay? And then uh, when it comes to a halt or stop, so the velocity V2 becomes uh, zero. So this will be our initial velocity or V1, V sub 1. Okay, so the force applied no, uh, to, to stop this is a braking force that is 1,500 pounds. So we are asked to solve for the time. Now, what is the time? So, after the brake is applied, what will be the time until the, the automobile stops? Okay, so here's the solution for this. Again, uh, we have to apply the principle of impulse and momentum. Uh, the impulse is equal to the product of the constant force and the time interval. Alright, so that's a concept. Okay, so initially we have the velocity V sub 1 equal to 60 miles per hour. And when it stop because the brake is applied, then uh, the V sub 2, the second, I mean, the final velocity is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the distance traveled. And we are asked to solve for the time. So what is this time when the car or the automobile stops? Okay, so our solution will start by converting this, no? converting this into feet per second. Because we have pounds here, the unit is in terms of pounds or if you look at the problem so the unit is in terms of pounds so pounds and feet will go together so we have to convert this miles per hour into feet per second as in the previous uh, uh, problem i mean in in another method so we have the same problem here but uh, in another method so we converted this so you can use the same conversion okay so uh, we have here the free body diagram of this uh, restriction. So we have here the applied force, that is the braking force. This is the, okay, this is the the force, no? the force, and this is the normal, normal force, normal to this uh, weight of this car. All right. So, from our impulse and momentum uh, formula so we have here the formula m v sub 1 plus the uh, impulse summation of impulse from 1 to 2 so impulse and momentum equal to the product of m times uh, the final velocity v sub 2 okay so uh, we can uh, translate this into this uh, diagram so we have here the force no? because it's running we have the velocity here, uh, V1, which is given 60 miles per hour. But 60 miles per hour, when you convert that to feet per second, so that is only around uh, 88. Okay, so we have here uh, our V1. No? V1 equal to, or V sub 1 is equal to, we're given 60 miles, right? Uh, was it 60 miles? Yes, yeah, 60 miles per hour. So converting this... So we are given 60 miles per hour, miles, okay, so miles means mi per hour, okay, per hour, and we convert this into, uh, in terms of, first we need to convert this into uh, mile to feet, so one mile is 5,000 to 80 feet. I think this is one miles. 
okay this is uh, fit All right so this is uh, 5,280 feet per mile okay so per mile so we have a mile here at the numerator okay let me check uh, let us uh, try to check that is and then you uh, you have the miles and miles miles at the numerator miles at the denominator okay so we can uh, this one and this one divide is equal to one then we have r okay so change r into seconds so we know that uh, So multiply this by, by the way, you are multiplying it here. So multiply this by, uh, or first this one, fit, we have and only, only the R. 1 R, we have uh, 1 R. 1 R is 12 to 60 seconds, or uh, 60 minutes. Okay, so convert this into seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So convert minutes into uh, seconds. So we have uh, 60 seconds per minute. Okay, 60 seconds per minute. So we have uh, 1 here okay so we have minute uh, what is left here is uh, this now is in seconds okay so this is in terms of seconds okay so 60 seconds so we have only so 60 times 60 so this is uh, 0 so it's 60 times 60. Uh, 60 times 60. So 0. Uh, 0, 0, then 36. So let me check. Okay, so that is uh, three hundred sixty. Uh, so one hour. So we have uh, one hour is 360 seconds. Uh, it means that uh, so one hour. So multiply this by one hour divided by 360 seconds. Okay, so this is now in terms of seconds. Okay, so let us check. Uh, multiply 60. So we have 60 times 5,280 feet and divided by 360. Sixty times five thousand two hundred eighty divided by three sixty.
okay so this is 360 60 times 60 60 times 60 so plus this is uh, 3600 okay so this is 6300 Okay, so uh, V1 therefore is equal to, V sub 1 is equal to 88. Okay, so this is 88 feet. So the unit now is 88 feet per second. Okay, so we have com converted uh, the unit into feet per second from, from miles per hour. All right, so that's why we have here uh, 88 feet per second. Okay, so uh, from the formula, this is our formula, the impulse and momentum. Okay, so taking components parallel to the inclined, no, parallel to inclined. So we have, okay, so from this illustration, okay, so this, there, there is a, a component uh, if you if you expand this one oh, we have to uh, alright so we have this it will look like this class okay so this is the five degrees okay so that's the five degrees And we have here the, the component, no? the horizontal component of this. Okay, so assuming uh, force going to the right is positive. Okay, so we consider the force going to the right is positive. And uh, force going to the left is negative. Okay, so we have here MV1. So M is just, our M is just uh, weight. No, this is weight divided by the gravitational acceleration okay so we're given uh, this is the weight then gravitational acceleration in terms of feet because you are using here feet per second so we have to use this uh, feet per second the uh, value for g which is 32.2 feet per second squared all right so multiplied by the v1 so our v1 is this one this is the, the converted no this is the converted uh, value Okay, so this is our V1. All right, so plus 4,000. So what is this 4,000 uh, sine, uh, sine of 5 degrees multiplied by T? So we have here a force class you know, that is due to this uh, weight of this car. So there is a horizontal. So you can let this one as our F, F of X. Okay, so f of x. So from trigonometry, so from trigonometric functions, and this one plus, by the way, this is our weight, no? The this one, this is the weight. So this is our weight w. Okay. We have sine opposite. This is a hypotenuse class. Uh, this is the hypotenuse side. This is the opposite side. So from the 
from trigonometry we have sine of the angle sorry this is sine sine of the angle uh, angle is five degrees so find sine of five degrees equal to opposite so our opposite is f f of x okay so assuming that this is our x-axis uh, these are x-axis or y-axis inclined and divided by the hypotenuse which is the weight okay so of course multiplying so you'll get uh, f of x the horizontal component of this weight so equal to w so you could multiply this one so i have w uh, times sine sine of five degrees okay and we know that uh, w is given the problem the weight of the automobile is equal to four thousand okay so this is four thousand this is four thousand multiplied by sine of five degrees okay so that's why we have it uh, here okay so then multiplied by t because uh, you know uh, related to our discussion about work and energy so this is just the product the impulse would be uh, the product of this uh, force so this is now a force um, sorry and multiplied by the time no? from, from the basic concept that uh, the force or the work we have u equal to uh, the force applied multiplied by the displacement so we still use this uh, same concept plus the displacement which is s so this is the displacement uh, but uh, for the impulse we have for the impulse so we have the force or the impulse is uh, the force multiplied by time no? f times t uh, that is taken from uh, we have the integral no? that is the integral f f uh, from our discussion a while ago from the previous slide so from here if you may if you look at this one so f times dt all right uh, so this is f times dt okay so this is our our impulse no? impulse and momentum all right so substituting so we have here because this one is going to the right fx going to the right mv1 going to the right but the force applied, uh, the braking force, is going to the left. So that's why we have here negative. Negative uh, 1,500 multiplied by the time. All right. So equal to zero. Why zero? Because here, this becomes zero. Because the velocity here, when, when the car stops, no, at, when the car stops, uh, the velocity, uh, when the, because initially we have here V1, right? We have V1, but when the car, when the braking force applied, it will stop. So when the automobile stops, so V sub uh, 2 is equal to 0. So that's why on our right side of this uh, equation, this is 0. Because M times V sub 2, our V sub 2 here is equal to 0. Our V sub 1, this is the, the one that we have calculated, the converted value. Okay, so this means... Uh, v sub 2 which is 0 multiplied by m so that's equal to 0 so that's why our right side here is equal to 0 okay so manipulating this equation using your skills in algebra and solving for t so we got t equal to 9.49 seconds all right so this is the solution of our first example so thank you very much and hope to see you again in our next example bye